Hi, I'm Pastor Dennis Plant. I'm the principal of Vision Colleges, the best Bible college on or off the internet. But don't take my word for it. Go to the site www.visioncolleges.edu.au and there you'll find an incredible set of studies that are available to you. You know, we don't believe that everyone is the same, that all of our needs are identical. So we don't have a set fixed curriculum. Rather, we make it possible for every student to tailor the program of study to suit their needs. Or even if you're run, wanting to run a Bible college, to run your Bible college for your people in your community and your church, rather than, as I said, simply fulfill a, a curriculum that's kind of one, one size fits all. We're not like that. We need something better. So go to visioncolleges.edu.au. Whether you're looking for personal studies, whether you're looking to start a Bible college, if you're wanting to div get professional development for your ministry, whether you're simply seeking to satisfy idle curiosity at the Internet Bible College or Vision Colleges, you'll find your needs easily met as far as studies are concerned. But right now, I'd rather take some time to share with you concerning a particular study that we're running, and that is knowing God's voice. I really can't plumb the depths of this particular subject. I can only give you some idea of what this subject is about. But I want to encourage you to come to the site, get the book, get it as a reading book, get it as a PDF, get it as a subject, but get the book so that you can get to understand what the subject really is all about. Knowing God's voice. And this particular session is going to be about the will of God itself, trying to get our heads around the idea of what the will of God is. So here's a key verse for, for us. Jesus said, I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. I want you to think about that for a moment. I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. Jesus put the will of the Father above his own will and in doing so he gives us an example of what it is that we should be doing we need to be seeking the will of god and it's important to get our heads around that there's an awful lot of benefits on getting to know the will of god but there's a lot we need to learn about it and of course you can't deal with that in a 25 30 minute message I'd like to start considering some of the things that we're going to have a look at in this particular session. It's rather important to get our heads around what does the word will mean. Well, it means to decide on the basis of our own will or purpose or power of choice, what I want to do. That is my will, what I'm determined to do. And that applies in any way that you deal with the word of someone's will. But there are four issues that we're going to deal with concerning the will. First is to identify that there are three types of will operating in the world today. But then we want to define the expression of God's will. And then we want to examine the life of Jesus in relation to that will and stress the importance of the will of God to each and every one of us. No matter who we are, no matter what we might be doing, no matter what we might think, we need to get our heads around what these things really are in order to properly understand what it means to know God's will for ourselves. So let's think for a moment about what those three wills are. Here's number one for each of us. The self-will, this is the will of man. So this is the, the, the will of man, the basic selfish nature which causes us to desire to do our own thing. You know, you guide your life by self-will. We make decisions as to what we want to do, where we want to go and so on and so forth. And they're not all bad. But left to our own devices, self-will is not going to be terribly helpful. Jeremiah has something to say about this. He says, I know the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man who walks to direct his own steps. What Jeremiah is trying to tell us is that man left to his own devices is going to make some pretty serious mistakes. And indeed we do. We're going to have a look at this a little bit further. God says, 
because of the self-will of people, we read that what God says, I gave them up to their own heart's lust and they walked in their own counsels. That's a pretty serious statement to wait, make. And David says, do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries for false witnesses have risen against me and as such they breathe out violence. This idea of self-will is not a particularly comforting or helpful concept. Not everything we choose to do or desire to do is bad, but again, left to man's own devices, a lot of the stuff that we do is not healthy either. It's not good for other people. Man left to his own devices can be a very grievous individual, and we need to understand that, and we need to realize that self-will is not something that we can rely on if we want to get the very best out of our lives, not ever. Well, I don't want to go into great depth on these because they could, each of these issues could take an entire session. But now we've looked at man's will and that whilst we can do good things and we can have noble aspirations, the fact is, and look around the world today, we see that left to his own devices, man's aspirations are not particularly helpful at all. But let's have a look at the aspirations of someone else who is even worse than man. That is Satan's will. What we start to see when we look at Satan's will is that he has a desire to destroy all that is good in your life, in everyone's life. Jesus warned Peter of the will of the enemy. The Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. And then Jesus goes on to say some more. He wants us to understand the thief does not come except to steal, to kill and to destroy. But I've come that you might have life and they might have it more abundantly. The will of Satan is to destroy other human beings. And we see that in the world around us today, in places right now like the Ukraine, in Africa and South America, on the streets of our cities where murder and mayhem are often rife amongst those that are addicted to drugs and alcohol and all kinds of other things. The depravity the man sees, the number of people that are homeless. I want to say something here. These things come about because of the will of Satan. What he wants to do is to destroy people. And he has no desire to do anything but destroy. And yet we see that Jesus said, I came that you might have life and you might have it more abundantly. An enormous contrast between the will of Satan and the will of Jesus, which is the will of God. The will of God is for us to have an abundant life, a life that is full and rich in every possible aspect. And so we take a moment to look at God's will and what God's aspirations are for us. But not everybody's going to be following God's aspirations. Jesus says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father. Oh, you notice here something, it's the will of my Father in heaven. And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at that last day. So here's something to think about. The Bible itself speaks very clearly that there's the will of man, there's the will of the devil, and there's the will of God. The question is, which one are we going to follow? If you want to know what God's will is for your life, there really is only one way to look, and that is to see what the will of God is for you, for me, for each other. And that needs to be properly understood. The New Testament, as most people would know, was originally written in the Greek language. And when it comes to the will, there are two words, and particularly the will of God, there are two words that are used. One is called the bulimia and the, uh, is, the other one is called the thalema. The bulimia and the thalema, and each of them has a particular meaning. The bulimia refers to God's sovereign will. This is God's predetermined plan. He has written it out for us in the word of God. It's his master plan. The thing is that about the bulimia, it doesn't require a cooperation from human beings. God's will will be done. He has absolute power and control over that and he knows what he's going to do. He set out his master plan for the world. That 
cannot be changed. That's the Bulima, the absolute fixed will of God. There's nothing you or I can do about the Bulima of God's will. But there is yet another aspect of this will of God, and that is the Thelema. Now this refers to God's desire for man to experience and live in his will. It refers to God's individual plan for each and every one of us. God has a plan for your life. Now God doesn't force you into that plan. God leaves that for you and me to choose to enter into. We can choose God's path for us or we can choose ours. And of course, this is what this subject is really all about. Trying to find a way to understand what God's plan is for my life and really why I should try to do that. It's absolutely essential then that I understand that there is on the one hand God's set will, on the other hand there is the will of God for you and me, the Thelema, God's plan for our life not set in concrete, the, well the plan is set in concrete but our cooperation with it is not. We can choose to be a part of that plan or not. We can do it on a daily base, basis. But then again, there is another type of God's will, and that is the moral will of God, which you and I need to understand. This moral will of God, again, is written in the Word of God, and it's, it's those laws, those principles, those concepts, those ideas by which we are to live. Again, they are choices, but they are not the that, that dynamic will of God which shows us his purpose as to whether we're going to be an evangelist or a preacher or a deacon or if we're going to start some miraculous ministry or be involved, which is what most people are actually trying to find out. If we don't meet the moral will of God, we will not be able to enter into the Thelema, the will of God for our lives. You can't enter into God's will for you if you are not prepared to enter into the moral code that he has for each and every one of us. So let's have a look at a chart here and get some idea of the will of God as it's been set up for each and every one of us. So there's the sovereign will of God, the Bulima, God's predetermined plan for the universe unaffected by the decisions of man. There's the individual, the Thelema, God's detailed plan for each and every individual, but it's affected by the decisions of man. And then there's the moral codes, the moral will, the moral commands revealed in the written word of God, which teaches how we should believe and live. The individual will of God always, always is in harmony with the moral code of God. The moral code of God is always in harmony with God's will. So we need to understand then that there are these three aspects to the will of God. Two words, Belima and Thelema, but three aspects of the will of God which we need to be able as human beings to embrace. For us to chase down this idea of getting to know God's will, it's rather important to see the example that Jesus set because the example that Jesus set indicates to us the value of knowing God's will. Whatever Jesus does is a great example for all of us. And he set some fairly remarkable standards for us as far as the word of God is concerned. So I'd like you to have a look at some of these examples. You see, what we start to realize is that Jesus' chief concern at all times was the will of God during his ministry. He declares this, this is the will of the Father who sent me, that all that he has given me I should lose nothing, but should raise it up at the last day. God's will was for, was for Jesus to come and he should save and secure and keep those people that God gave him. That will was to bring men and women into a right relationship. I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but the will of him who sent me. Then again we can read, the purpose of his life was to fulfill God. We said, do you not know that I must be about my father's business? From a very early age, Jesus was about the business of 
meeting his father's business. His father's will was most important. And Jesus sets an example. So if the father's will was most important for Jesus, it needs to be most important for you and for me also. Then again, we have he who does not love me does not keep my words and the word which you hear is not mine but the father who sent me he who does not love me does not keep my words if you don't keep his words you're not keeping his will jesus said i do nothing of myself as i hear i judge my judgment is righteous i don't seek my own will but the will of the father who sent me so you say you want to hear God's will. You say to me that I want to know what God has for me. I want to understand his power for me. But are you willing to seek his will above everything else? Are you prepared to put aside your ambitions, your ideas, your hopes for what God has planned for you? Because that was Jesus' life. And that was the life of the apostles. And that was the life of Christians down through the centuries that have made an impact for the kingdom of God. And you listening to me may be saying, well, I want to know the will of God so I can make a difference in this world. Even if it's only a little difference in my corner, I want to make a difference by connecting with God's will. Well, are you connecting first with that moral code? And are you willing to make the purpose and the will of God, the object and the purpose of your life at this time. Of course, not everybody's got a clear-cut idea of the will of God or the value of the will of God or why we should follow it. So I've got a few reasons here for us to consider this. First of all, knowing the will of God is critically important for a whole bunch of reasons. This has to be one of the most important. The will of God determines your eternal destiny. Your eternal destiny depends on doing the will of God. And we need to understand that it's really important because, well, the scripture says there narrow is the gate and difficult the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. The problem is that so many people are trying to find their way to eternal life, to happiness, to something, but failing to realize that it's not an easy road to eternal life and that that eternal life is going to be found through knowing the will of God. And yes, it is going to be difficult. There is no easy road to the kingdom of heaven. Now, then again, of course, we want to know God and we want to have the will of God and we want the benefits of God. But have we stopped to think about this very next point? It is the basis of your relationship with God. Whoever does the will of God is my brother, my sister and my mother. If I do not choose to follow through with knowing the will of God, then I don't have a relationship with Jesus. And if I don't have a relationship with Jesus, my eternity is lost. An eternity without Christ. It's not something to take particularly lightly. Jesus thinks it makes it very clear for us. Those who do his will, the will of his Father, are those who are going to find eternal life. Those are the people that he is going to decide are his brothers and sisters, his family. Are you part of God's family? And did you realize that we're actually commanded to know the will of God? That's how important it is to Jesus that you and I know his will, that he actually makes it a command. Not with I service, as men pleases, but as bond servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. You and I need to be willing to put aside what we want to do and be willing to do the will of God, not through gritted teeth, but from the heart. That requires a relationship with Jesus, which you can't have if you don't have the will of God at your own heart and it cannot possibly happen if we're not prepared to submit to God's will and oversight for each of our lives. Of course it never stops with just one or two things does it? As a Bible college principal as a something of a theologian I get amazed at some of the things that people teach, some of the things that people believe Many of the ideas that people have are so far removed from the truth, even though they seem on the surface to have biblical soundness. 
The fact is a lot of things are not biblically sound at all. We need to realize that because you see proper understanding and relationship with God is going to lead us to having a sound doctrine. If anyone wills to do his will, he shall know concerning the doctrine, whether it's from God or whether I speak of my own authority. If anyone wills to do his will, he shall know concerning the doctrine. What was Jesus saying? Well, what he's saying is that when you start to work in and know the will of God, you start to realize those things which are not quite right. Those things which are in the shades of grey instead of being clear. We start to realize the truth because the will of God, the word of God, never separate in principle. So if you and I are going to know the will of God and do the will of God, we have to understand the word of God. All these come together in a practical living way. Sometimes we call this practical theology. That is the ability to take what the word of God says and apply it to my life and say, well, this is the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing. Knowing the will of God is going to secure your understanding of the word of God and what God wants for you. Not knowing the will of God is also very often the reason why people don't see their prayers answered, especially Christians, as they are not working and living in the will of God the way God desires, and so there's a consequence. When you are living the will of God, you can pray with confidence that your prayers will be answered. Whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Now, I do need you to be careful how you hear what I'm saying. I'm not saying that unanswered prayer is always the consequence of not following God's will. But I will say this, one of the reasons why, and a major reason why prayers are not answered is because we're choosing to do our thing. And very many times say, Lord God, if you do this, I will do that for you. <laughs> Doesn't work with God, you see. If you do this that God wants, then he will do that for you. So we tend to get the cart before the horse. We've got to understand, knowing the will of God is going to lead us to answered prayer. Knowing the will of God is not going to lead us to a rigid life of dissatisfaction and misery. It's not going to, how could it? Because knowing the will of God is going to get us to know Jesus, who is going to give us life more abundantly than we have had at any other time. So this is really important to get hold of. Knowing the will of God has really good, powerful, effective consequences for each and every one of our lives. Knowing the will of God is going to bring about many of the spiritual blessings in our lives that we want. And this is brought out wonderfully in this particular passage here. You have need of endurance so that after you've done the will of God, you may receive the promise. The old English version of the Bible, the King James, says you have need of patience so that after you've done the will of God, you may receive the promise. Because one of the problems is that we are very impatient human beings and we want the will of God, we want those blessings, we want those things to happen to us right now, yesterday if possible, instantly is preferenced. But, you know, I want the will of the blessings, the promises of God, the wonderful things of God. I want them right now. But the word of God is very clear. It says, well, you need to be patient if you want to see the will of God expressed in your life. You have to have patience. But you have to have patience. Let's just check that scripture again. After you've endured. So we do the things that God wants us to do. And after we've done those things, we will find that the blessings we've been seeking, the promises that we're aware of, are going to be revealed to us and given to us. We have to learn to be a people of patience in the will of God. There's a tendency for people to think that the will of God automatically means a life of drudgery and misery and so on, because it, it, it doesn't mean that at all. In fact, it means pretty much the exact opposite of that. Knowing the will of God brings success for each of our lives. Have a look at what Jeremiah had to say on this particular matter. 
The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you'll meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do all that is written within it. For then you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. And how do we know the will of God? We know the will of God because we get to know the word of God. We get to know the word of God and that enables us to move in the will of God for our lives and we see success because he tells us, he guides us, he will literally guide you into success if you will follow the principles of the word of God. And the success that you have will be an eternal success, not just a, a temporary success right here in this life. We have both. We can have physical success, we have temporal success, and we can have spiritual success and eternal success by following the principles of the will of God as laid out in his word for each and every one of us. And the final point that I want to bring for you on this particular topic is that it is going to be, knowing the Word of God is going to be an incredibly powerful motivator for each and every one of us. If you love me, keep my commandments. He that has my commandments and keeps them, he it is that loves me, and he that loves me shall be loved of my Father. I will love him, I will manifest myself to him. There is so much that we could just say on that particular topic, so much that we could bring out just by trying to deal with that. I want you to understand something though, that when you love God and when you want God's blessed and blessings for you and you want to walk in them and you get to loving Jesus as a result of that and you start to feel and know for yourself the reality of God's love. That is so important. You and I are loved by God and loved to the point that he wants to pour blessing, goodness, success, peace, righteousness, all those things that we want into our lives because of our relationship with him it can only come because of walking in and knowing the will of god so here's our reasons for getting to know the will of god and to understand something that is vital for each and every one of us to know the will of god in every sense of our lives and it's vital for a very good reason you see for each and every one of us this point that i make in every session still counts that you matter to Jesus you matter to God you matter to the point that no matter what else Jesus came for you to show you and me that we can live in the will of God we can know the blessings of the Word of God we can have our prayers answered we can be guided by the Word of God we can know success in our lives both here on this earth and throughout eternity and we can walk in the full fullness of life Jesus came to give you life and to give it to you more abundant but it cannot be a reality if I don't understand this truth. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That thing about believing in him means making his will your will. You're not going to be successful at it overnight. It's a journey. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to do the wrong thing. You're going to misunderstand. You're going to get tricked. But you're going to walk in blessing. You're going to hear the word of God and learn to recognize it. You're going to see good things. You're going to see excitement occurring in your life on a daily basis because God is going to work for you and in you and among you because that's who God is. He has a plan and a purpose for you. It begins with new birth. It begins with conversion. It begins with being born again. It begins with recognizing that he is God. And in whatever way you want to do it, saying to him, Lord Jesus, I want to make your life my life. I want to give myself to you. And whatever you ask me to do, I'm going to do my best to do what you want me to do. I'll do my best for you. As I said, it's a journey. You won't get it right first time every time, but you will a lot of times. And your batting average, if I can use that expression, will get better and better. And as you walk in God's will, you will learn to do better and better 
in his will. Of course, that's what this whole series is about, learning the will of God from the book by Harvest Time, Knowing God's Voice. And this session has been on the will of God and how you and I can get to just recognize what it is. So till next time, I'm Pastor Dennis Plant, Principal of Vision Colleges, and I just pray that God is going to bless you real good. <laughs>